Okay, this is going to be a very short video about the relations between martingales, sub-martingales and convexity. So, we know Jensen's inequality that tells that, let's recall, imagine we have phi, a convex function. So, a good picture would be this one. And imagine you have x, a random variable, with the expectation of both x and phi of x finite. So we are in a context that everything we talk about is in L1. So just to give an example, imagine that x is equal to minus 1 or 1 with probability 1 half, for example. So let's put this, let's make a bigger picture. So 1 is here, minus 1 is here, and let's say that it has some probability of being minus 1 and some probability of being 1. So phi of x, you have some probability of being this value and some probability of being this value. And the expectation of phi of x is going to be somewhere here. This is the expectation of phi of x. While, so it's a combination of these two in the y-axis. While the expectation of x is here somewhere. Depends on the probability that x is minus 1 or 1. If it was half-half, the expectation would be 0. And this is phi of the expectation of x. So we can see that the phi of the expectation of x is smaller or equal than the expectation of phi of x. And that's what Jensen's inequality tells us. Not only that, but the conditional version is also true. Phi of the expectation of x given f is smaller or equal than the expectation of phi of x given f. So these are the normal and conditional version of Jensen's inequality. And this will have implications when we study martingales. So what happens if we take a martingale and compose it with a convex function? What happens? So the first theorem answers exactly that. So if xn is a martingale with respect to fn, and phi is convex, then and this is all in L1, then uh, phi of xn, this family of random variables is a sub martingale. Okay, so proof. It's very simple. So one follows from here. Two is obvious. Phi of xn is in fn because it's a function of xn. Now to 3, 
what's the expectation of this thing that wants to be a martingale in time n plus 1, given fn? OK, by Jensen's inequality, this is bigger or equal than phi of the conditional expectation. And this is exactly phi of xn. So it's a very simple proof. And we are going to state a theorem that is very similar to this one, but doesn't start with a martingale. It starts with a sub-martingale. But it's going to make, uh, it's going to be important to separate these two theorems. And it's going to be clear why in the proof. So suppose that x n is now a sub-martingale with respect to fn, if filtration. Suppose that phi is convex, but also increasing, or non-decreasing. This means phi of x is smaller or equal, um, is bigger or equal than phi of y, if x is bigger or equal than y. This term is, is terrible because a non-decreasing function is not a function that is not decreasing. But anyway. And that the expectation of phi of xn is finite for every n, just like we needed in the previous theorem. Then phi of xn is a sub-martingale. So the proof is actually going to be very similar to the previous one. But it's important that you know we need this extra assumption when we replace martingales by sub-martingales. So 1 and 2 are just the same. And to 3, let us look at the expectation of this candidate here to be in a martingale, given fn. We can again use Jensen. And what is inside here, because this is a sub-martingale, is bigger or equal than the expectation of xn given f. Sorry, it's bigger or equal than xn. But the fact that we can say that this is also bigger comes from the fact that phi is non-decreasing. Then we can actually say that this is bigger than this. And we're done. So it's very important that in the previous theorem, we just replaced this by xn, so it needed no information about phi. But now we are using that phi is monotone to use to get this inequality out, so to say. OK, these are two very basic theorems that relate convexity of um, Martingale, convexity of functions when applied to martingales. And just to give a further example, like to make this a little bit more concrete, let us take, for example, xn, which is a sum of iid Vernon variables with zero expectation. 
Now, the positive part of x n, so for example, this was a fair game before, right? I draw, let's say these are coin tosses with probability minus 1 and 1, fair coins. So if I every time gain $1 or lose $1 depending on the result of the coin, this is a fair game. But if I can never go below 0, then it's a better game. Right? It's actually a sub-martin sub game. And it's important to distinguish this game from a game that once you hit zero, the game is over. This game, you could go down, stay a bit down, like this random walk could go down. And once it goes up, you go up. So if this is the original xn, the xn plus is going to be this. It's going to follow xn until here. Then you just wait without losing money. If xn happens to recover, you recover together. The same is true if this was a sub-martingale because of the second theorem. Now, for example, if you want instead of taking the positive part, you want to take the absolute value of x, then you need a martingale. It's very important that the expectation is zero for this to be a sub-martingale. So now this game is the same as the purple one, but it's even better because when the random walk goes down, you go up. So the orange game is also sub-martingale, but in this case, you actually need the expectation station to be exactly zero. And it's intuitive because imagine that this game was kind of had a tendency to go out up, the original white process. When it goes here, it has still a tendency to go up, but that means the orange path has a tendency to go down. So it would not be a sub-martingale. If you recall the proof that takes non-increasing, like non-monotone convex functions, you see that this is exactly what's happening. So yeah, this finishes the lecture on convexity and martingales. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about the convergence of martingales.